Leah. And I'm Kyle. And we're driving and vibing. Today we're going to continue our Q&A series and answer a question we got from Lori on YouTube. And she wanted to know how our composting toilet's been working out for us during the 11 months we've been on the road. And so first we want to talk about the installation. It was pretty straightforward. Um, we just had to screw in two brackets to the floor and it came with two twist knobs that secure the toilet down. And it calls for just a little bit of 12 volt power. We ran the cords or the wires into our existing 12 volt wires that were located by the toilet. But you can also plug in a 110 adapter and that should work just fine. We haven't had any issues with the power source mm -hmm. at all. Yep, and we, you also have to like vent out from where that fan is and we just kind of routed that down through the hole where the previous toilet and plumbing went. So that was pretty easy to do. Yeah. And then to get the base started with a composting toilet, you're going to need a little peat moss or cocoa core, and that's going to be used to uh, promote the compost of the solid matter. So we chose the cocoa core, which is dehydrated coconut fiber, and it's a small little block about like this. So it doesn't take up much space, which is great, and it reconstitutes into quite a bit. So um, basically all you want to do is add enough water to um, reconstitute it and get it uh, fluffy. You don't really want it wet and that's going to make a great foundation for that compost to get started. If you research on YouTube composting toilets, you'll see some do-it-yourself ones that use sawdust as the compost material. That will make sure the compost doesn't smell, but it won't compost at all and you'll have to empty it a lot more if you use sawdust. Yep. So we really like the cocoa core. And definitely not recommended by any of the composting toilet companies like Nature Set or Airhead. Um, next, we wanted to talk about using it. It can seem a little intimidating at first, this weird new plastic mm. thing in your bathroom, but it's pretty straightforward actually. There are some holes in the front for the urine, and then there's a large hole in the middle of the toilet for your solid matter. That's operated with a latch to make sure no smells escape. And whenever you're sitting on the toilet, it really just feels and operates like a normal toilet. You wouldn't know the difference, you know, whether you are on the nature's head or just a bathroom mm -hmm. toilet. And that latch helps prevent any urine from contaminating the solid part and creating volatile, stinky, bad bacteria environment, which is not what you want. Um, so that kind of leads us into like cleaning it, which isn't as hard as it may seem. And I think that's what most people are worried about. And if it's been composting properly, uh, when you empty the solids tank, it should look like just soil. It smells earthy. You don't see anything nasty or anything like that. And you just remove the tank and dump it into a trash bag and drop that in a dumpster. And it's completely safe and harmless. In the urine that goes into a separate tank in the front, that tank holds about two or three gallons, I believe and we end up having to empty that about once every two to three days. When we empty that, if we're out boondocking, we'll just walk into the woods a good distance and empty it out. And if there are toilets available, we'll empty it down the toilet and flush it a few times. Either way, it's good to go. Some areas uh, have regulations against dumping it, but 99% of the areas yeah. allow to dump the urine out. Yeah, just disperse it throughout the area, basically, is what most of the rules generally are. and. Okay, so to dump both of these um, reservoirs, what you do is there's a bottom part and a top part, and the top part is where the seat and the lid is, and it's on a sliding hinge, so you just remove that, and then unscrew the solid tank, and then that's when you can flip it. And then the other one, you just unlatch the top and lift it up, and then you can pull the tank out easily. And so if that solid tank isn't spotless when you dump it out, that is fine. If there's any residual matter in there, that's just going to help the next composting cycle start. So we chose the composting toilet for a few reasons, uh, but none of the reasons were the price. It was a little expensive for us. It cost right under a thousand bucks, and it was one of the most expensive things we put into our camper. But our black water tank was so small that we'd have had to emptied it on a way too often yeah. for our own taste. So this composting toilet allows us to go about two months without having to think about the black water. Mm -hmm. And that was the main reason that sold us on buying the, uh, yeah. the, the nature's head. If you have a bigger rig with large tanks and you don't have to worry about that sort of thing, this might not be for you. But for smaller spaces with smaller tank capacity, this really gave us a lot of freedom and we, we really enjoyed it. And, been happy about our choice with it. Yeah, and second reason why we really wanted the composting toilet is because we're not a fan of putting uh, really strong chemicals into our camper. And with the Blackwater tank, you know, 
we've read that you have to put some chemicals in there to help break it down and we didn't want any of those things fumigating into our living area and so the organic quality of the nature's head composting toilet was just a big selling point yeah we liked that a lot too it little pricey but it was worth it for us and a good choice for us we would love to know if you have a composting toilet what brand what you like dislike about it um, if you have any more questions please leave them in the comments below or leave us topics for our next q a thank you so much for this topic and uh, reaching out to us and uh, hopefully we can help you make an informed decision if you were on the fence trying to decide if you wanted to buy one or not and we'll link that below yeah, so thanks for watching the video. Find the links below. Make sure you subscribe to our channel if you're interested in travel or RV life or really just some good entertainment. <laughs> We're uh, driving and vibing, y'all, and we'll see y'all next time. Yeah, thanks for watching.